Hello and welcome to Urban Bird Feeding, or what happens when you try and give away free food to birds, the rest of the associated food chain will notice. For those of you bird enthusiasts, all bird species were seen in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania region. During the pandemic, I made a few bird feeders from things I had around the apartment. Most of these are items found in the recycle bin. I'd like to share some of the things I learned about birds, bird feeders, squirrels, and I guess the food chain with those things. So while stuck at home, bird watching is a good distraction. So let's build a bird feeder. This first version was a crowd pleaser. It's just a peanut butter jar with a perch and a large hole about two and a half inches on both sides. And that diameter was picked because that's the hole saw I had. After a few days, birds started to notice the food I placed on our balcony railing. You do have to lure them to the spot because they just kind of ignore new bird feeders in the area. Eventually they found the bird feeder and took to it quickly. After a few weeks, a few birds noticed this was a designated safe place and would have a sit for a few minutes each visit. This turned into a few hours each day and eventually a bird did stay overnight at this Airbnb. I wouldn't say this is a bad thing from a bird feeder perspective. However, a squirrel definitely took notice of the extended staycation from our bird friend. Without anything to jump to since this was hung pretty high, access is limited to where the feeder was hung. This means climbing to the apartment unit above me and shaking the feeder until food comes out. This wasn't a huge success for our squirrel as you can see here. Please pardon the cliffhanger reference. The squirrel disruption along with birds actually sleeping inside the feeder was enough to warrant some changes to the design. The next design was the most successful. This is a peanut jar where the only difference here is one end of the jar flares out a bit and makes for a better place for birds to poke at and dispense food. This bigger lid comes from an even larger peanut jar, and it's placed under the perch to catch any spilled bird food as the birds are eating, which has limited effectiveness, which I'll talk about later. Holes are drilled using a step drill around this jar, which allows more birds to feed simultaneously. To make a perch that could sit more birds, I did some CAD and 3D printed this ring. You could accomplish the same thing with some sticks and string, but trust me, I had the time to spend on engineering a bird feeder over the pandemic. Birds quickly and intuitively took this newer bird feeder. For the most part, squirrels restrained from trying to climb on this feeder since I started hanging the feeders with tall aluminum cans covered in some cooking oil. This does get a little gross after about a week since bugs like to eat this oil and then they end up just getting stuck to the cans anyway. But the smooth surface gave the squirrels little grip, so a fall from a second story apartment was a deterrent enough to keep them away from the feeders. However, the increased frequency of birds also meant I went through significantly more bird feed, which most ended up on the ground. This attracted more squirrels in the end anyway, and of course there's always one that seems to ruin everything. One squirrel in particular would bully other squirrels and birds away from this build feed, and we'll call this squirrel Mr. Nuts. Mr. Nuts would visit so much and cause such a scene someone else in the food chain noticed. This hawk came to scope out what the deal was, and our bold squirrel decided he had another contender trying to eat the food he claimed for himself. There were a few standoffs. I cannot say what the fate of this squirrel was, but we've reached another issue with the bird feeders. So much bird feed was being spilled out and off the balcony, my neighbors below let me know they did not appreciate the mess. So a new bird feeder was in order, maybe something to stop so much bird feed from being spilled and ending up on the ground. I call this next one the experience dome because it was something of a radical design. Really, it's just a clear storage box or container with holes cut out only to let the birds in. But instead of a small bedroom like the previous one, this is more of like a in and out restaurant. To train the birds to be okay with something like this, I had to get them used to feeding on the ground just over a long period of time. That wasn't an issue because they always kept doing that, but I did have to keep a trough full of food near the experience dome so they would get used to it and eventually approach it. I also entertained the squirrel and made him a picnic bench with nuts to keep him busy and away from the birds while they get used to the experience dome. Getting the birds used to this took about two weeks. Eventually I removed all the free access food so the only way to eat was to enter the dome. To my surprise, birds again just don't care and got used to this and they would enter and come and go as they please. Once in a while, a bird would panic and forget where the exit was, but a friend would kind of poke his head in and sort things out. Some pigeons that showed up during the trough feeding would also stick their necks in, and of course, our squirrel came back. Mr. Nuts seems a bit triggered by this new feeder. 
He could stick his head in but only reach a small area. Pushing the food further into the center seemed to tease him enough to the point he would get pretty stirred up. Sunflower seeds were his favorite from the bird food mix, so every day he would spend some time chewing away at the portholes to gain access. And every week I would 3D print new ones and the cycle would repeat. This bird feeder contained all the residual spills caused by all parties involved, so the mess problem was resolved. And once again, some birds would just sit inside for about an hour and eat, showing that they were really comfortable with this. This is like going to the lunch buffet and staying until dinner service without having to pay twice. Birds know this trick too. They became so comfortable, I set up a camera and a picture-in-picture -picture to watch the birds while I was at my computer. So in conclusion, I think the Experience Dome or Bird Restaurant was a success. Well, hopefully this experience was helpful and shed some ideas on how you can make a bird feeder and possibly a squirrel-proof one in that instance too. There's many ways to feed birds and there's many ways for squirrels to ruin the fun. Good luck making your own and thanks for watching.